All right, everyone, welcome. Today, we're going to talk about how to build a likely to sell list of homeowners who you probably want to market to if you're looking to get listings. So we're going to talk about data today. So there's really like three types of lists. So I'm going to give you three lists we're going to talk about today. The first one is an equity list. This is just kind of a font, like your general form. Like think in terms of maybe a zip code that you're just going to be in front of all the time. So your typical farm, I call it an equity list. Okay. The number two, now a distress list is going to be, these are people that are, yeah, have expired, uh, their home expired from the MLS, uh, life situations that someone might be in distress situation where they need to sell. And generally speaking, a distress list, you would work the entire county because there's only, it, it depends upon where you live, but there might only be a couple hundred or a couple thousand people and distress list because you go countywide. And then finally, there is a likely to sell predictive analytics list. This is where um, there's all these companies like, you know, chomping your iPhone location data and the websites that you visit and like the apps that you use and what you purchase on your, you know, your the points that you get on your American Express, you know, all that's being sold and analyzed on you. They match that to property records and you can buy these predictive analytics lists. Okay. And generally speaking to with a likely to sell list to go countywide because it's a smaller list. So an equity list, point number two, is a niche geographic area of single family homeowners, ideally in a high turnover zip code that, you know, the homes have appreciated quite a bit. You know, there's probably at least 30% equity, you know, in the house. And ideally, they probably have lived there for like at least eight to 10 years. So how do you find a turnover rate? Well, you pick a zip code or any area, and then you just divide that by how many homes sold in the last 12 months. And the higher the number, the better you know, uh, probably some lifestyle factors, you know, generally speaking, you know, the higher the turnover rate, <laughs> the better, because <laughs> there's a higher hit rate. That's the, when you, if you reach out to that zip code, more likely you'll find somebody that actually wants to sell a house. So here's the deal with your equity farm. You basically want to be in front of this list all the time, you know, once or twice, I mean, all the time, I mean, in every way you possibly can afford. So a distressed list are homeowners who are facing some type of difficulty and may need to sell. This can include a lot of things. And I showed you a lot of them in PropStream. It can include um, maybe stagnant active MLS listings, expireds, old expireds, uh, for sale by owners, for rent by owners, vacants, pre-foreclosure, old foreclosures, tax debt, liens, probate, inherited property, bankruptcy, divorce, code violations, mom and pop landlords, evicting tenants. I mean, there's people that specialize in people going to jail. So the more lists they appear on, the more distressed, the more motivated this poor person is. They call that list stacking. So that's distressed. So the question is, how do you get those that, that information? Now, I'll tell you, the best distressed leads, like we talked about, come from point number eight, the county recorder's office, since it's fresh. And you got to be like really careful with this. So what you do is you hire a virtual assistant to log in every single day and like read the court complaints. So like when a spouse files divorce on another spouse and like they're out trying to serve the other spouse, like you'll know they're getting divorced before the even spouse knows. And you got to be careful with that information. The way you work a distress list is you have to get there before anyone else and you want to reach out to them to every possible way that you can with your message. So the third list is a likely to sell list. Now, what this does, basically everything you do is like sold off and goes to these companies. And uh, once you have all that consumer psychological and behavior data, you can match that to their name on a property address and you can start figuring out like who might be a little more statistically likely to sell. And there's companies that do that. So the, the likely to sell list uses big data and AI algorithms. And if you're into that, you statistically model who's most likely to sell based on like thousands of consumer behavior and life cycle data points. So they basically take the behavior data with the property data, run it through a data algorithm of something like data robot and be like, all right, I, I'm going to spit out, these are my predictions. I predicted that, you know, 10% or 15% of the people in this list that I give you will sell in 90 days. And then they backdate it to see if they were correct. I guess I should really add a fourth list. Courtney, I want to update this. Point number one is you have an equity list, you have a distressed list, you have a likely to sell list. And then I would say you have a, uh, a database list. So I think let's add that. I want to really talk about like, how do I find sellers who are likely to sell their home? Let's work a farm. Let's work distressed leads. Let's work a likely to sell list. And then let's take your current database. Let's upload it to some type of predictive service. Get that. As well as when your emails go out to your database, working the opens and clicks. I'm of the opinion that you take all your, your equity farm, you take your, um, distress leads, you take your likely to sell, you just throw them on one spreadsheet because running like specific campaigns, all of them is just like exhausting. 
one spreadsheet and they all get the same letter saying, call me, I have a buyer. That's what the market wants to hear. And it's your job as an agent to deliver on that. Any message that skews from that language is not what the consumer wants to hear. You can still make a living at it, but it's beginning more difficult.